Clash of Clans have big plans for the game and they recently shared lots of information on future updates. I want to consolidate that information and give you my thoughts on what they said in this video alongside my 2024 wish list. I'm also going to touch upon the most recent update, some of the stuff I like and do not like about it. And since that will only take a couple of minutes, let's go over that first before we get into the juicy information such as Town Hall 17, new heroes, and even using them whilst they're upgrading. Firstly, I like that it was home village focused. I think even if there are updates for the builder base or clan capital, there should still always be something for the home village because that is what most clashers fell in love with. The new spell was the main part of the update and I actually really like it because I feel it helps casuals. You can use it purely to set up the funnel, but it can also be used by the pros in a queen charm charge, pathing your battle drill to an area of the base, or even with the royal champion. So I think it has a lot of use cases. I'm excited to see what everyone comes up with, but there is also that risk versus reward. Because the spell lasts a long time, if you don't use it at the correct timing, then that's on you. It could come back to bite you. With regards to the clan chat, I do like the overhaul. I think it is much needed to modernize the clan chat. I will say I can't quite put my finger on it, but something looks off in terms of the messages. Having the player's name and league badge above the message that they typed doesn't look as seamless as the previous clan chat, in my opinion, but I'm sure this is something they will continue to improve. I like that they have set the foundations of improving the clan chat, and I'm excited to see what other features they can bring. There was a change to the upgrade screen, which was not in the patch notes, and this definitely has mixed opinions. For me, it's quite nice when you do have the gold pass, you can clearly see what the original cost was and how much you're saving, but I did message the team as well in the creator chat because I do not like that it is always there when you don't have the gold pass. I can see the rationale behind it. It could be there for a couple of key upgrades maybe, but it should not be there all the time. It's just too in your face. The team have said that it's buggy at the moment, and I'm hoping by that what they mean is that it should not be there all of the time. And by the time this video comes out, I hope that they've even fixed that, but I guess time will tell. With regards to the Royal Champion equipment, I am glad that we can swap out her abilities now. I really like the addition of hero equipment and being able to tailor things to our strategies, but clearly there is concern from the community of the amount of equipment being added to the game. I hope that there is a nice balance of all for all players, but I'm sure that is something they will be looking closely at. The other change that I don't like, which wasn't in the patch notes either, is the final attack confirmation screen. When you have finished and it shows the troops and spells. There was a post on Reddit saying it was my fault due to my video breaking the game in war last week. Is uh. There it is! <laughs> It's got this. Oh my gosh. <laughs> However, it was so close, like literally a couple of days afterwards. It's just a wild coincidence. And at first I quite liked it. Being able to have an interactive screen at the end of your attack. The icons aren't shrunk, so you can clearly see them. You can click to see which hero equipment was used. But then I realized, well, a lot of the time I quite like to screenshot an army that is used, whether it's me watching a replay in game or a YouTube video even watching the pros at the world finals. So I'm not exactly sure what the solution is to that because I do feel a lot of players will be the same. It's nice to have the game moving forward and we've seen with the progress bars that Supercell wanted to modernize the UI. They did that and then they realized there was something they overlooked so they made changes. I hope there can be a solution found here as well but I'm really not sure what that could be to be honest. But let's now go over all of the update information we received from a Q&A with the Clash of Clans team. And I do want to say that I was 
very impressed with how honest the team were in these answers and also how much information they actually gave. Even if it is not something that they are currently working on, they let us know where their thought process was at and whether we can expect it in the future. The answers were posted on Reddit. There was 29 questions in total. I'm just going to focus on the main ones because actually a couple of them have already been addressed in that recent update. But the very first question of the Q&A was, can we use our heroes whilst they're upgrading. For each question, I will display the answer from the Clash of Clans team so you can read it word for word, but I'll summarize each one and give you my thoughts. Essentially, right now, they're not in a position to allow us to do this because hero books and gems are too much of a revenue driver for the game and they would have to build out alternative revenue streams before they would consider doing that. I feel that is a very honest answer because it is a business at the end of the day and in order for us to have new updates, they have costs in which they need to generate revenue. And we can kind of expect this answer. We all knew that this is the reason they didn't want to bring it, right? One suggestion that has been floating around for a long time is a hero potion that would allow you to use them for one hour. Maybe the team feels that it would decentivize the use of hero books too much if you could use that potion for a war attack. But in itself, that would be gems to get. So it could drive revenue by itself. I think it is a good solution, but there's potentially a better one when we go down to question 29 from the Q&A. Don't worry, I'm going to go through all of the other important ones as well. But a question was asked on whether we could see a fifth hero. Does the answer look similar to what I suggested to Darian in my interview with him last year? We don't want five heroes on the map because that just feels overwhelmingly complex. By the way, if you did not see, Darian announced on Twitter that he is leaving Supercell and moving back to America. Obviously, he has done amazing work for the community. I want to thank him for all of the opportunities he's gave me personally, but wish him the very best in the future. With regards to their answer, though, about only taking four heroes into to an attack. I think that's logical. The heroes are so powerful and also it makes sure that the complexity of an attack isn't continuing to increase. But there is another benefit to this in that if you can only take four heroes to an attack but there are five available, potentially even more in the future, then that would mean that if you upgrade a hero, you are not severely handicapped in war. You can just switch out your heroes and there might still be instances where you really want the Archer Queen. So, you know, there's still use cases for the hero books, but it would mean that we could still be an asset to our clan in war. So I do like the idea of more heroes. I think as Darian said in that interview, they just need to find the right place for a hero because if they just start adding them without a specific role then they probably won't feel as special. The last thing I would like to say on heroes is with regards to them upgrading I don't think that should be the case for a friendly challenge or a friendly war. I should be allowed to use my heroes whilst they're upgrading. We can draw the line in that it is a friendly and I have said that multiple times now to Supercell, which would also tie into one of the features I would like to see, which you'll hear about once we get to my wish list. The next key question in this Q&A, I feel though, was with regards to upgrade times and how they can be discouraging for players when they are too long. This is something I have heard again and again from my subscribers or whenever I meet people in real life that say, oh, I used to play Clash of Clans. I always ask them, what made you stop? And a common response is the upgrade times. Supercell have touched on this previously as well, but I thought it was important to show the answer due to the importance it has for players, but they are not looking to extend upgrade times from what they are now. They actually significantly slashed upgrade times at the highest Town Hall level. When Town Hall 15 came out, there was 21, 22 day upgrades, that is no more. A couple of them are still a few weeks, but that is significantly less. And obviously every time there is a new town hall comes out, they reduce the upgrade times of previous town halls. And this is important that they get the balance right because they were also asked, when can we expect town hall 17? Another 
new town hall. Previously, we had been told if it's a town hall, nine months later, town hall would have gotten like town hall 15.5. Then nine months later, it would have been town hall 16. But obviously, with the release of town hall 16, it was much sooner than that. And they said they are looking to keep this quicker schedule. Roughly once per year, we can expect a new town hall level. This is because they have expanded the team so can now bring more updates. That's actually something I forgot to mention in my update review. That was a bonus update, if you will. Typically, we don't get one until April and we managed to get one much sooner than that. So I am glad that they are bringing more updates. It keeps the game feeling fresh and hopefully each of those updates still have significance because of the size of the team. So that's one reason they are going to the 12 month cycle. I think I I'm torn on this. I get where players are coming from with the upgrade times, and I think that is on Supercell to get the correct balance so that much like the ore, it is fun for all players. Yes, they need to make revenue, and that is clearly something which is done via magic items and upgrade times, but it still needs to be accessible for free-to-play players. So as long as they get the balance right, I do quite like the idea of having a new town hall every year. It means that every year in clash of clans we have a new theme for the game obviously this one being the nature theme it was also good to have the new troop and spell tying into the theme but that would be pretty good and it also means that after the world championships we've built up towards the climax of that town hall we get to see who is crowned the world champions of town hall 15 town hall 16 and the next world championships it's the next town hall i would say on that note though i would like to see a little bit of a greater gap in between the world finals and the new town hall because last year it did just seem a bit of a rush in between the two but i guess that's a separate topic the final thing i would like to say on new town halls this is something which i have clearly said to supercell and i know that they know this but every new town hall has to feel revolutionary there has to be something that changes gameplay drastically and makes you want to upgrade and get excited about a new town hall not just new defense levels clearly that is something they're aware of and have i feel got a really good balance of the past few town halls but having a new one every year means that they have to come up with those unique ideas more frequently and as long as that is achieved and they get the balance of upgrade times correct then i am quite excited to see a new town hall every year another thing i would be excited about is a goblin map editor much like map maker in brawl stars when we've discussed this idea on previous occasions it's always kind of been ruled out because they would have to monitor which maps are being created in case there was anything inappropriate but i do like the response here and it seems like they're very fond of the idea so this is something that we could potentially see in the future as long as they iron out the things that they're concerned about for me i think it would be brilliant to to be able to create custom maps because the goblin maps much like challenge levels you can break the rules with you can put multiple eagle artilleries on the map as we know with where eagles day and it just makes it fun they should be trying to add things that are more exciting and the goblin map editor is one of those they haven't been adding enough goblin maps in my opinion i understand why they are very fun and they're very popular but they're kind of one and done once you've completed the map you never have a need to go back to it but putting the new maps in the hands of the community means they could rotate them weekly or monthly whatever the timeline was there are two more questions i want to go over from the q a before we go to my wish list for this year but i obviously will have all of the responses linked in the description the first is clan alliances this is something that has been discussed in the community for years and i do appreciate their response in that essentially everyone's idea of what they would like from a clan alliance is different and the team has that thought process as well but they want to focus on the single clan experience first which makes sense they did discuss how they obviously want to continue expanding the clan chat the recruitment system a number of different features to make the solo clan experience better before they considered branching out to clan alliances but i feel like one big feature that many people ask for is just a whitelist system which they kind of alluded to they wouldn't be opposed 
adding separate from a clan alliance feature. Another key thing that people mention is a clan alliance chat, which could easily be another tab on the new improved clan chat, potentially somewhere where we can friendly challenge across them or share bases. You start getting into the realms of just having it being a bigger clan. And I guess that's kind of how I think about it is I would see a clan alliance as yes, whitelisting to move across different clans, but essentially it is kind of one big clan. It's just that you can have multiple wars spinning in those different individual clans for clan war leagues. For example, many of us split into different clans anyway, so we could still feel like one clan. It's just that we have different rosters spinning and that's my idea of a clan alliance anyway. But as with anything we're talking about in this video, I would clearly love to see your thoughts in the comments, especially when we get to my ideas. I'd like to know whether you agree or don't agree with them. The final question that I want to raise in this video was the clan XP perks. This is something that I agree with the team on. It would be punishing to add more in-game perks, whether it be new levels to troops, donating more troops, it makes it even harder for new clans to begin. It's already hard enough for a clan to grow from scratch without then having more perks they'd have to catch up on. I do like that they are considering aesthetics or cosmetics as part of those perks as you level up rather than just the levels meaning nothing. That could actually tie into something I said last year in my features I would like to see in that we could could have customizable war backgrounds. In clan war leagues, we have different backgrounds based on the league we are in. What if the clan levels every five levels, you unlocked a new aesthetic for your clan to use rather than the standard war background. Even just something like that, I feel would be a nice addition, but I'm sure there's also better ideas as well. Okay, onto what I would like to see. I would say this year, but some of these are big changes, so I would just like to see them added to the game. The first thing that I think is most needed is a pro mode. How I think this could be best implemented is customizable friendly wars. Exactly what I've spoke about in my previous editions of what I'd like to see. Typically, I bring one of these videos at the start of each year. Never got around to it this year, so that's why I'm tagging it alongside this video. However, this is something that could be utilized by everybody. It would be super fun to just break the rules of the game, change the attack time so we could have it shorter or longer, increase the amount of troop capacity that can be taken so you could have a 30 second attack but a thousand troop capacity. Can you do it? I don't know. Obviously, there would have to be some limitations to make sure it was accessible across a wide range of devices and not break Supercell's servers, but we could also ban troops or spells. However, specifically for a pro mode, you could alter the HP of buildings or troops. So you could increase the HP of buildings by 10, 15% and decrease the HP of troops by 10, 15% so that the best players in the world had a balance that was catered to them. Because I agree with the balance of Town Hall 16 over Town Hall 15. Town Hall 15 for the majority of players was way too difficult. Town Hall 16 is more in line with what I think it should be, but obviously the more competitive players, it becomes easier for them. And I don't think it's fair to say, well, the majority of players this balance is great for, so you're just going to have to deal with it. They are the hardcore players of Clash of Clans, so we should try and cater to them, but the general balance of the game should be for the majority of players. Having the ability to adjust the strength of defenses or troops like that could mean that the World Championship is played with certain rules. They would have to be figuring out of what the would be to have it be an ideal balance but it would also mean that different tournaments community tournaments could run their events differently because they could customize whatever they want in the game one main drawback of this is that currently legend league is a representation of the best players in the world but they practice there 
for tournaments. And if the tournaments were in a different rule set, it might not be as useful for them because mechanics might change. You could add some sort of system where above 6,000 trophies, it clicks into the same rule set as the world championships. I don't think they should make it a different league. It shouldn't be called the Diamond League or something like that because then it makes the general player base feel like they're never going to get to that top league. And getting to Legend League is a huge achievement for some people. So we should keep it as Legend League, but there could be some other rules. Or even without the Legend League change, I think just having the customized wars would be a huge advantage for the pro scene. And everybody could utilize that feature because who wouldn't like to mess around in clan wars like that? <laughs> Moving on though, similar to that, I would like to see some improvements to the friendly challenge. Having the ability to create what army can be used for the friendly challenge would be really good because it means that players could create their own challenge levels in a way and that is something the team have touched upon before but what i like about that is you could also set what the levels of those troops are so for example if my friend has started playing the game recently they are a town hall 7 or 8 i'm a town hall 16 I'm just going to obliterate their base. Whereas they could put up a challenge saying these are the troops to use. Now we can kind of attack each other. I can show him a bit more of the game. So it could be fun in allowing you to friendly challenge your friends a little bit more and encourage more people to pick up Clash of Clans because they do get to play alongside their friends more. On top of that, I think it would be great if we could allow multiple people to attack the base that we've put up for friendly challenge. Maybe even have some sort of clan leaderboard so we could see who gets the highest attack attack result versus it and even on top of that i would love to see a friendly challenge legend system think about this myself and five other content creators get together and we set up a friendly legend league day and then each of us get to attack every other person everyone can stream their own perspective and oh my gosh it would be so fun in order to see that and again you'd have that leaderboard much like in legend system where we can see who comes out on top I, I think that sounds amazing and i'm sure that people would enjoy seeing that as well it is something that maybe they could make small tweaks to the friendly challenge system as they go or they just overhaul the whole thing i, I don't know how big the team wants to dream with the updates but i know the team is expanding and they are very motivated to make the game the best that it can be so that's why i'm sharing all of my thoughts as well on that note then a mega base now i know since the last time i've talked about this clan capital has been released but i would still like to see it for the home village i loved that feature in boom beach being able to attack a base alongside your friends to collectively try and take it down it could still work in the home village they'd obviously just have to make sure it doesn't take away from the clan capital but if we're really going to dream big i would love to see a co-op mode clash royale has a 2v2 why can't we? Can you imagine being on voice with your clanmates and breaking down the base, all attacking collectively at the same time? Obviously, the, much like the customizable friendly wars, they'd have to get the balance right in order to make sure there isn't too many people attacking. Even if it was similar to Boom Beach where one person attacks and then the next person goes, I still think that would be amazing. But if we could attack at the same time, that would be next level. I'd say I just have a couple of quick fire ones now. With regards to the events we have been seeing, the Mashup Madness, Cookie Rumble, and the Dragon Festival, I really like the events. I like how they have been created, and I obviously hope we continue to see them, but I will say I hope we don't get too many of them. Uh, some people could probably argue once a month is okay. I think probably the gap we had in between the Halloween and the Christmas one was better you know six to eight weeks i think is more natural because if there's too many of them they start to lose their charm in my opinion and i know that this is going to be something that everybody has differences of opinions on but i hope that we can get the cadence right so that they are still meaningful and they are exciting every single time and what i would like to see is similar events to that that we can cycle through so for example the 10th class 
Clashiversary event where we had all of the challenge levels. We worked through them in order to get a free scenery. I really liked that. It was a big success. I've never seen engagement in Clash of Clans like it. That is an event format that they can replicate and they could do that again next Clashiversary and it means they don't have to do the same style of event working through the pass to unlock the troops every single time. Again, I really like them. I think the event pass provides fantastic value, but I hope we can have different iterations on it enough that they don't lose their shine. And maybe that's having a couple of different formats of events that can be cycled. I, I hope that makes sense. Next, more UI changes. I do like how they've been trying to modernize the game and make it look better, but there's still other areas that they could improve, and I'm sure they will continue to. One suggestion I gave them in the creator chat not that long ago was your profile, the achievements. It could mimic that of the clan games where there's a nice image. Once you've completed it, it has a three star over the top. I hope that they continue to make the game feel fresh and a bit more up to date. A prime example of this, last night I went to log into the game, I was being attacked and I had to sit and wait for two minutes before I could do anything. And I understand that I can't log into the game because I don't know how much loot has been taken away from me or anything like that yet. But even just a little button that I could switch to one of my other accounts would be very much appreciated. Emotes. I think emotes would go fantastic in Clash of Clans. There are so many good emotes in Royale. And this is, again, something I discussed with Darian in my update interview with him. By the way, I will just link you to that at the end of this one because we talked in depth about a lot of things that are not discussed in this video and he gave answers as to why the team may add stuff and will add stuff and why they would not add stuff as well so I think that'll be an interesting listen for you but back to the emotes I don't think they should be seen by an attacker but when war is happening and you have a bunch of my clan mates and a bunch of the enemy clan mates watching we could see emotes and see what's happening back and forth it's just that the attacker themselves wouldn't be able to see them and not get put off I think they would just fit perfectly in the game. Replays. I would love to be able to rewind because if I just miss something that I'm trying to watch, I have to exit out, go back in, skip through the attack to that point in the replay. I had a lot of coders, I guess, respond to me in last year's suggestion video and tell me how that is extremely difficult to do. But seemingly Royale has a similar feature where they can just skip back a set amount of time. So the game doesn't have to read the code backwards because that's what a replay is. It rereads the code and displays it but maybe they could skip back in time 15 seconds or so and it would mean that we don't have to go through the entire replay again to see that specific moment if that is a possibility i'd love to see it on the token of replays i actually think this could be pretty cool what if you could pin a replay to your profile this means when you go to apply to a clan they could look at your profile and they can actually see a replay of you attacking before they have to accept you into the clan and do any kind of checks and whatever clans do to recruit they could see your skills from your profile and it'd be a nice way to show off to your friends as well plus any pro players i would love to be able to see replays from the number one player in the world but i also understand that they don't want to give away the tactics in legends league and everything but if they could select which attack they wanted to pin and that would be amazing. Moving to Clan Wars, I would love the ability to attack bases after the war has finished. So go back in, and if I messed up the execution of my plan, sometimes I'm sitting there thinking, I would have loved to know whether that would have worked. You could test that out. You could just go back into the clan war and attack whichever base you wanted. The 24 hour cooldown in friendly challenges is so that you can't copy enemy war bases, quickly practice and then three star them. That was actually implemented based on community feedback. But anyway, that wouldn't apply here. You could just go in and practice on the bases and see if you could fix whatever went wrong in your attack. Moreover, I think the war tools for clans could be given some improvements so right now we can add a note or call a base a lot of people play the game differently obviously and some people draw out their plan to share with their clan mates that is something i think that could be implemented into the game so you could sketch out your plan based on predetermined images that you could drag onto the enemy base and then that plan would be attached to the war base so other members could take a look give you feedback maybe some 
more competitive clans when there is better players than others or you're trying to train someone up they could actually draw out the plan and let you know what they think you should do there's a mixture of use cases i think it would be good to get more tools to help people improve at the game i don't know how many people play with sound on but for my content a lot of the time i have it turned all of the way down and i suggested sliders a long time ago i'm very happy to see that they are implemented but i would actually like to see the sound broken up into different aspects so right now we have music and sound effects but in sound effects we have all of the button clicks the upgrade noises but also when you go into an attack the troop sounds the defense sounds and sometimes at higher levels it gets very overwhelming when you've got every defense firing You've got noises from the spells the troops i would like to be able to separate the attack noises with the general in-game sound effects i think that would make a big difference for me personally in, in terms of content i could then vary the levels of those i don't know i don't tend to play with sound on very often because i'm recording content but i do feel that those players with sound turned on they could balance things better you can let me know in the comments because anything in this video by the way i typically share my feedback with super as soon as I have it. So pretty much everything in this video, they already know. But I like to do these videos to share with you what my thoughts are on the game. And also I get good suggestions from you. We can have a conversation in the comments. And sometimes if there are really good suggestions I hadn't thought of, I send those to the team as well. So with regards to sound, definitely let me know whether that would or wouldn't be helpful. Finally, the Supercell ID. One feature that I would love to see is the ability to link accounts. So if you do get a new device you can log into one account and then it would say do you want to preload whatever accounts and then you could do that it also means if you use the supercell store store.supercell.com in order to save on your purchases you could log into one account and if you bought the gold pass or gems you could then just say which account you wanted it to be deposited to i think that would be pretty helpful but i understand there's a separate team for supercell id and things as well anyways that is my review on the other update information for future updates and what i would like to see just doing something a bit different in terms of an extended episode having them all together let me know what you think and if you do want to see that interview with darian where we went into a bit more depth on things i have that linked on your screen enjoy the rest of your day